her supporters are claiming that her record as an education advocate has prepared her for a seat in the U.S. Senate. But is she really cut out for the job? We haven't even heard her speak. In the pundit pit today, Andrea Tantero. She seems nice, but who knows? She's a political analyst and FoxNews.com contributor. David Callahan is nice, co-founder and senior fellow of, of, uh, of Democrats, I imagine. And Julie uh, Roginski, former Corzine communications director, and Tyler Harbour, Republican pollster. First off, uh, Andrea, do you believe that Caroline Kennedy, some of the blowback that she's experienced right now is just, and the blowback she's getting is from Democrats? Yes, it's absolutely true. Look, she's just another Upper East Side rich kid that's bounced her way from cocktail party to cocktail party that wants to turn New York into a principality. Look, she wouldn't be anywhere without her father. Cuomo, you could argue, wouldn't be anywhere without his father. Clinton wouldn't be anywhere out without her, well, daddy. Husband. Daddy. So that's, that's why she was senator of New York. Come on, we have serious problems here. We've had a brain drain, a budget drain. We need somebody who knows how to get things done. And David, on top of that, a lot of people are getting tired of this dynasty, whether it's Bush, Clinton, <laughs> Cuomo, Kennedy. Can we move on? Well, let me just say about Carolyn Kennedy. She knows how to get things done. This is a woman who helped raise $300 million for New York City's public schools. You try to raise $300 million for New York City public schools. Right. It's not easy. <laughs> I will. This, is, this woman is a mover and a a shaker. She can bring home the bacon for New York, for sure. Uh, Julie, there's a lot of Democrats. I mean, G Gary Ackerman, uh, the Congress, long-time congressman here, calls her basically J-Lo and just wants to know why she is qualified. And now Shelley, um, uh, Shelley Silver, the Speaker of the House here in New York, said, I am totally against this. This is Mayor Bloomberg's brainstorm. Well, you know, look, I'm a Democrat and I live in New York and I'd love to see my next senator actually say something before they get the appointment. I would love for Caroline Kennedy to come out and stop speaking, not through surrogates, but actually to come out and speak directly to the voters. I understand she's in a tough situation because she's only appealing to a constituency of one, and that's uh, the governor, Governor Patterson. But still, as a voter, as a Democrat, I would love for Caroline Kennedy to come out and say what exactly she stands for. She may be the most brilliant human being well, out there, but her staff, is a, yeah, her staff is kind of palinizing her. They're hiding behind, she's hiding behind the staff now. It's not cool. It's Which not, even yeah. Governor Palin says was a mistake uh, early right. on. She and it's a mistake now. for Caroline to do that, too. Tyler, is this good news for Republicans who want a, uh, a Republican as a New York senator? Might this be an opening in two years? You know, th this may be a soft seat. You, you, you really have a situation where you're bringing on a star. You're bringing on someone that has no policy experience whatsoever. And the bottom line here is if they want a star, they need to appoint a star. If they want someone with experience, they need to look somewhere else. And, yes, that does make the seat soft. But I think it's a stretch to say that New York uh, has a potential of electing a, a Republican senator. I think that's even a stretch for me to say. I think their, their best hope might be a Republican governor. We'll debate that some other time. Uh, meanwhile, Kendall's going on so far, and the Democratic Party hasn't really taken over like they can and are about to in a couple of weeks, but how many more Blagojeviches or Wrangles do we need before the party starts living up to its promise that Pelosi put out there that it's going to be a very clean and the cleanest ever and the most ethically high standing in the history of this country? It's not happening so far. We're back with our pundit pit. You know him well. Julie Roginski's right in the middle. David Callahan's right around her. Tyler Harbour's uh, in the middle. And Andrea Tantero's to my immediate left. Andrea, we'll start with you. No scandals uh, yet. In the no pit. scandals yet. yet. But now we understand that uh, Governor Blagojevich and the relationship with Barack Obama, Obama has done his uh, internal review, and it turns out they're clean. A four-day investigation. Can we turn the page? Well, so they say. When you're in a presidential transition office, your emails don't apply to the Freedom of Information Act, which means that you can ask for their emails and you can make them public. So if Barack Obama really stands for change, I encourage him to be transparent and present all the emails that have been happening while he's been in this trans presidential transition stage. He hasn't done it. So if he's not going to be the status quo, if he's not just going to come out and say everything he stands for, you know, then, then who really is the guy? I mean, he right. says that he's clean, but how do we really know? Wait a second. The U.S. attorney himself said that Barack Obama was clean. There was never any implication from the U.S. Well, attorney's why, office. But then why put out? Why, why put out? The, why release this today? Because why he was asked to. Because dump? the U.S. attorney asked there was him. No what the there was no one judge. There was no. Excuse me. Let me just say in this. Press in press terms, no. when campaigns and and you know elected officials put things out on holidays, Friday afternoon, he was the asked dump, to when wait. The media is, he was asked there to was wait no by the U.S. attorney. A hundred percent. He wanted to do it. Or he had to. Legally, they could have uh, no uh, so David, I want you to get in here, but do you think a four-day investigation of yourself will ever make people feel as though there's nothing there? Well, they've been looking into this from the, the moment the story broke, so it's not a four-day investigation. But let me just take a step back here. In the spirit of Christmas generosity, I want to say something about the politicians. Look, corruption is a bipartisan thing. Ted Stevens one day, Charlie Rangel the next day. Oh, sure. But in the grand scheme of things, 
these politicians are much less corrupt than they were 50 years ago. Our politics is cleaner. We forget this when we get caught up in these. Well, well that, that's, well, not, a good, yeah, that's not, not a good sign. Look, in 1994, when Republicans came to power, they came to power under similar circumstances. There were scandals. They came to power and said, we're going to clean Washington up. In, in 2006, Democrats come to power saying the same thing. We're going to drain this swamp. We're going to make Washington better. Now, throughout the, those years, between 1994 and, and, and to current, you've seen a number of laws outlawing uh, lunches with lobbyists, outlawing a number of loopholes in the lobbyist system, and now you have a situation where lobbyists are so far removed from the process, they may not even be effective. So now we're down to the core. Now we've removed all these layers, and we have just the core, and it's all about greed. And now the Republicans and the Democrats both looking at, at themselves and saying, hey, you know, maybe we have a problem here. The earmarks are still leading to this. And here's the thing, I want to bring up. I don't think the American public, even if there is something there, I don't think the American public wants anything to do with with this because they need Barack Obama's administration, Republicans and Democrats, to hit the ground running. I don't think we could afford to be mocked up in some Illinois scandal. I agree, and so I, I agree, but there's nothing to come clean about because, again, U.S. Attorney Fitzgerald, first of all, asked Barack Obama to not release the report until yesterday, so that's his schedule. That's not Barack Obama's. While his own investigation was going on, did not want to get in the middle of the investigation. And secondly, look, Rob Lagorovich was going to break the law no matter whether the laws were on the books or not. This guy was clearly determined look, it's true, to be corrupt. It's true, it's true Fitzgerald asked them to, uh, to wait, but there was no impediment, no injunction, no gag order. Barack Obama could have come out so he should have released he should have told the US attorney well, to go scratch and he was going to do it? Yeah. him and no, Ronald well, no, no, chose no, no, no. selectively to have to develop no, no, no. he could not have gone to Fitzgerald and said I'm sorry if you know US oh, attorney he yeah. you're doing if your he investigation wanted, you're doing your yes. investigation but you know go scratch okay. I'm going to release hey, this David, right now. here's come the on. one problem the one problem is that Patrick Fitzgerald says something interesting for legal experts. Blagojevich, who we thought would be long gone by now, doesn't have to go anywhere because if they're going to use this impeachment to get rid of him, they can't use any of his stuff. They can't use any of his evidence. Leave that for me. That has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. So this guy's going to wait it out. He's got nowhere to go. He's got no job waiting for him. Right, and he's going to wait it out in order to keep collecting that, that paycheck. Which he complains so much about on the wiretaps. I'm only making $171,000. Well, and that's something important.